Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to use the BIOS flashback button on your MSI B550 Gaming Edge Wi Fi. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video will be showing you how to use the BIOS flashback button, which is here on your MSI B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi motherboard. Now this particular video is specific to this particular motherboard, although other MSI boards in the range with the similar button can be done in a very similar way. But we would always recommend that you follow the manufacturer's instructions, and alternatively, if you cannot find the manufacturer's instructions, drop us a line in the comments or join us on Discord, and we'll do what we can to help you, and obviously advise you further. So with that out of the way, let's get on with it. Okay, so what are you going to need to perform this process? So first of all, obviously, you're going to need your motherboard, something suitable for it to be mounted on, such as the cardboard packaging that it comes in. You will also need a USB thumb drive or flash drive. This one is a SanDisk. This is a 32 gig model, but essentially you can use pretty much most drives. Some people who have reported problems previously have found benefits of using an older USB 2 drive with a maximum capacity of around about 16 gigabytes. Also, you'll need a power supply, ATX specification, with a 24-pin power connector, and also a 8-pin CPU auxiliary power connector. So that's the hardware you need. Now all we need to do is to actually get the BIOS onto our flash drive, ready to flash to the system. So let's go over to the computer, and I'll guide you through the entire process. Okay, so first of all, this is the MSI website. So for us over in the UK, it's uk.msi.com, but you can just go to msi.com and then find your appropriate motherboard. You do that by clicking on products at the top and then go through to motherboards, then your particular type of motherboard type. So if it's a MAG, MPG or MAG series, just choose the one and then find the appropriate board. So we're at the MPG. So let's scroll down through until we find it. So there we are, MSI. MPG B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. And if you're not too sure, you can click on it to uh, get a closer inspection. Take a look in the gallery, just to make sure that it does look like the board you've actually got. So once you've got that bit, that's the first part. So we can minimize this window. Now we're gonna take our USB flash drive and insert it into a USB port on the motherboard. This drive in itself is empty, which is great. You can do this with uh, a device with data on it, but it's best if you can, if you can have a blank drive. So what we're gonna do just to make sure, first of all, is to make sure the drive is correctly formatted. So if we right click and choose properties, or alternatively, you could choose format. And looking at the capacity, that's right. FAT32 is its default. You can use FAT32. You cannot use NTFS and you cannot use XFAT. It has to be FAT16, FAT32, something along those lines. FAT32 is your best bet. So what you can do is do a quick format anyway, just to make sure that the drive is erased. And that shouldn't take more than a few seconds. So you can click OK, and now we can close that down. So let's go back to our MSI page. And what we wanna do is go up to this top corner and choose support. And this is the main support page for the motherboard. So what we wanna do is choose BIOS, which fortunately is what it's on already. And generally, you're gonna to wanna to get the latest version. Now for this particular board currently, 151 is the beta version. So we're gonna avoid that just to uh, remove any potential problems, and we'll go for the latest stable release, which is version 7C91V14. So go across to the end and click on the download icon, and then you can choose where to download it to. So we're gonna just download this to our desktop. As you can see, this PC and desktop. You can download it to wherever you want to, but I'm gonna use the desktop for this particular exercise. This should download in very quick time. Um, once it's downloaded, we can minimize our window go to the desktop and find our folder. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to extract the file or unzip the folder. So right click on the folder and then choose extract all. And then choose a destination. We're gonna choose the desktop still, just basically leave it as defaults and hit extract. So now this gives us our folder. So 7C91 V14. And what we need to do is go into the folder itself and find our BIOS file. So we've got two files in here. One is a text file, and one of which is our BIOS file. It's called a 140 file, but uh, you can ignore that for now. So what we need to do is to actually rename this file. So to do that, click on the file name, click again, and it should change so you can edit it. So we wanna change this to msi.rom. So msi, 
then a full stop, then ROM for ROM, and then erase anything else. When we click away or click enter, we'll get a notification, such as this one, saying if you change the file name extension, it may become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? And yes, we do. This procedure is only required if you're using the BIOS flashback button. If you're flashing the BIOS via the main BIOS or from within Windows through the Red Dragon software, you can leave the BIOS file as it is. So now we've got the file right, all we need to do now is to send this to our flash drive. And there's various ways you can do that. You can either drag it, but I'm just gonna right click and choose the send to option and then choose our USB drive D. So that's the file copied across. One important notification or recommendation is that the BIOS ROM file does have to be in the root, or that is the first line or entry point of the drive. So if you've got it actually inside a folder, so say for instance, we've got another folder and we'll call it BIOS. If you stick the folder or the file into BIOS, this will not work. The drive has to be in the root directory. So we're gonna cut that, go back to the root, click paste, and we can get rid of the BIOS file. You can leave it there, or any other files you can leave there, but this file, msi.rom, has to be in the root of the actual USB stick. So once we've done that, we can click on the eject button, and we can eject the ultra, or eject our drive, and take it out of the machine. Okay, so now we've got our thumb drive prepared, so now what we need to do is to get the motherboard ready. So the first thing to do is to make sure the motherboard is completely bare. This is part and parcel of MSI's procedure, so I would go along with it. You can if you want to, if you've already installed a processor or RAM or graphics card, you can go ahead and try and do the BOSS flashback method. It may or may not work. Generally, there is circuitry in the system, so if it does detect that there's components installed, the process will not complete. So for peace of mind and also to follow the strict guidance by MSI, it is best to do this on a completely base board. Now I would say, obviously, if you are getting this board and you're just putting a 3000 series processor on there, stop. Before you go any further, you don't need to do your BIOS update. The BIOS update generally is only to add facility to use newer processors than were available when the board was manufactured, such as the 5000 series. So if you are watching this and you've got a 3000 series processor or maybe an older 2000 series processor, the chances are you do not need to flash your BIOS. Again, if you're unsure, please do reach out to us in the comment section below or on Discord and we can advise you further. Also, we should note that flashing a BIOS potentially can damage your motherboard. So do be careful, make sure it actually needs to be done. There's no point taking risks unnecessarily. So we've got our motherboard and it's all the components that are missing. As you can see, no CPU, no memory, no graphics card, and there is actually no NVMe or M.2 drives installed either. So completely bare board straight from the factory. So what we're gonna to need to do is to connect up our two connectors, one of which is our supplementary power supply for the CPU, which is this eight pin connector in the top corner, and also the 24 pin power connector. So we've got our two power connectors connected now. So next thing to do is to actually plug in the power for the power supply, and then turn on the power supply. With all the electrical bits connected, we're now ready to put our USB stick in. So we can plug that into the bottom port, and now, we can make sure the power supply is turned on, as we said before, everything's connected up. And now what we need to do is to press the BIOS flashback button. And you should find when you do that, there's a little red light that comes on just by the side of it. Uh, so you can see there's activity. So I'm just gonna press that. And the flashing means it's reading the USB stick. And then we should find that the system powers up, which it has done. You can just about see there in the corner of the shot, the LEDs have come on around the strength bridge or chipset and also our PSU fan has come on as well and also we can see the light is flashing more rapidly. Now I did actually try this just now with uh, another drive which is this one the Sandisk one which we started the video on and this one actually got to the point where it flashed a couple of times and then stayed on permanently the LED so this drive was a failure so we had to switch over to another model both of which are Sandisk although this is a Sandisk Ultra the one that is in there is just a, a slightly older model. I think it's a SanDisk Cruiser. They're both USB 3.0, but anyway, you get the general idea. So we've just moved the camera angle a little bit so you can see a little bit better what's going on, or at least slightly. So again, chipset LEDs still on, and over in this corner here, you can see the uh, debug LED is on, just so you guys can see that. 
but we're still waiting patiently for it to complete the process. And there we go, it's just uh, shut down and it's now rebooting. And once the light has gone out completely on the BIOS flashback button, you should find that everything is completely done and all you need to do is just turn it off. Okay, so there we go, there is the BIOS flash update done on our MSI B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. A relatively painless task. Uh, we did have an issue, first of all, the uh, first scan disk drive, didn't want to know, literally just stayed on with a solid LED. But we switched over to a different sand disk drive and that one worked straight away. So this is, just to confirm, this is a 32 gig sand disk cruiser and works absolutely fine. So obviously if you are experiencing any difficulties, maybe the BIOS light staying on permanently or it just not seeming to do anything at all, then do try using a different USB stick. Weirdly for me, when it's actually done the flash and then it reboots itself and stays on is a little bit concerning for me, but it does seem to have done the job. So. Happy days. So hopefully this video has helped you. If it has, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to say subscribe and all that other YouTube stuff to see all of our future content. If you've got any comments, you know where to stick them in the section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.